Distinguished presenter, Sri Pavan Kumar Gudda Vallethi is Executive Director Telecom RDSA. He is a seasoned professional with 17 plus years of rich experience in research, design, development, standardization, project management, installation, testing and commissioning, and maintenance of signaling assets. He has also handled the development of train collision avoidance systems train protection warning systems based on ETCS level 1, the TCAS, TW, TPWS and ETCS L2 integration, fog pilot assistance system and automatic fire detection and suppression systems. The speaker has also rich experience in installing, commissioning, testing and maintenance of electrically operated lifting barriers approach warning to LC gates and optical fiber systems. The speaker is also associated with several innovative system improvements, such as OHC-based IBS, PPTC fuses, GPS-based GSM signal strength measurement, remote work, site management system, centralized voice logging to LC gate communication, centralized train information display, and announcement system, etc., that have been inducted into Indian Railways. A very warm welcome to you, sir, and over to you for your presentation. Good day. <laughs> Greetings to everyone. Uh, this presentation is about uh, role of coverage uh, in introduction of semi-high speed trains over Indian Railways for speeds up to 160 kmph. Indian Railways uh, have a pre warned signaling concept, a green indicating that the next three block sections are clear, double yellow, next two block sections are clear, yellow one block section is clear, red, you, the next block is occupied. So, as the speed of the train increases, the braking distance increases, and the visible time for a local pilot uh, up to 200 meters uh, reduces. At 160 kmph, the braking distance is approximately 1500 meters and uh, the local pilot time to look at the signal, uh, two signals which are spaced 200 meters apart uh, is uh, uh, only around 4.5 seconds. So operating at 160 kmph requires uh, onboard signaling devices as a backup, as a fallback arrangement to uh, the safety of the train. Now, what is the role of the signaling system? The scope is to have safe train management, avoid collisions or accidents. So uh, it works on the principle that a train can proceed only when the track ahead is free of any other trains. And uh, this is done uh, generally by automatic systems, sometimes in by manual procedures, and specific rules are combination of the above. Now, Let's understand the working of uh, the signaling system on Indian Railways. The station master controls the signal aspect based on the track circuit and points occupancy with the help of interlocking. This is the current status of signaling over IR. The stationary unit, the stationary unit uh, of ATP gathers the signal and track circuit status from the interlocking and then it passes on to the network monitoring system. Whenever a loco is approaching a stationary unit, it will send its position track ID, and based on that, uh, the permission to proceed is issued by stationary unit based on the signal and track circuits received from interlocking. This is the basic principle of working of the ATP system being provided on Indian Railways. And uh, this ATP system is known as coverage. Uh, uh, coverage schematic is like this. Uh, the, uh, in the relays aspects are read by the stationary vital computer. And those uh, relay status are converted into movement authorities and transferred through the radio unit. And radio unit with the help of antenna will throw it over the air for the locomotive. On the locomotive front, we have a local vital computer 
and we have our, our radio modem antennas working in UHF band. So through this, the information would be received. And in case if driver expected this, uh, driver is not able to control the train as per the predicted algorithm of local vital computer, with the help of brake interface unit, the brakes would be applied and the train would be brought into control. For this, for the location information, we have RFID tag fixing arrangement provided in block section at every one kilometer for odometry correction. This is used for track identification, correction of location of train and train direction identification. So some of the RFID tags are listed below. Normal tag, which is provided uh, in the block section generally. Signal approach tag, which is provided in 200 meters before the signal. Signal foot tag, just on the foot of the signal. And tin discrimination tag on the turnouts. Now, the RFID tags need to be programmed with the absolute location corresponding to the OHE mask. For this mapping of uh, the entire section data, for mapping the absolute location, the permanent speed restrictions, gradient data, extensive surveys are required to be done. So generally, we use drone-based surveys, which will capture the signal locations and the point locations. And also a small camera can be mounted on a locomotive. And uh, while the locomotive is traversing, it can identify the ballast, it can identify the sleepers, the traction mass, signal post, location boxes, station buildings, and, and everything is mapped to latitude and longitude. And this provides very accurate absolute location measurements. This is a real time video on the left hand side. And the right hand side, you have the AI based uh, analyzed video. The RFID then with the, uh, with the acquired locations, the details are filled in the RFID tags and the RFID tags are positioned on the track as shown in this diagram. Uh, the RFID tags are placed just at the signal, foot of the signal, signal foot tag. 200 meters before a signal approach tag or a normal tag is placed. And at every one kilometer again a normal tag is placed for odometry correction. At the turnouts again a 10 discrimination tag is provided. And each railway is allotted with a, a two digit code so that the stationary IDs are uniform. As you can see, the last three digits of the station are 386. And this particular station BAD belongs to North Central Railway. And the first two digits are required to be either 36 or 37 or 38. And each stationary unit ID should be unique. So Kavach is a multidisciplinary effort. It brings down the interaction level from board, RDSO, zone, and divisional level. At the mode level, it is monitored by signal and traction directors at additional member level very frequently. At RDSO level, electric loco, motive power, PS and EMU, carriage, track and track machine monitoring structures, traffic interact, and at journal and divisional level, the joint procedure order, uh, orders for handling the coverage are required to be framed. Features of coverage are it prevents signal passing at danger by automatic application of local brakes in case local pilot could not do so. It displays the aspect of approaching signal. It has continuous speed restriction works on the principle of continuous update of movement authority. Coverage can be interfaced smoothly with relay-based interlocking. Conforms to SIL-4, certified by European Independent Safety Assessors. 
in addition to this it has non signaling based additional collision features head on rear end anti collision side collision features it supervises the train during shunting movements it whistles automatically before level crossing gates it is designed for speeds up to 200 kmph and tested up to 160 kmph brief history is that the equipments uh, installation have got completed in 2015 and trials on single passenger trials have started in february 2016 and at the end of july 2021 three firms who made this product indigenously or indian railways are approved for speeds up to 160 kmph uh, in automatic block section and absolute block section over indian railways lot of trials have been done around 2.5 lakh kilometers of trials have been done over south central railway one of the gigantic railways of indian railways this is the driver machine interaction screen it displays the signal aspect with the line indication it displays movement authority the mode the speed section speed permitted speed train length measurement target type if there is any target current speed and also the target distance so at 160 kmph uh, we have done trials for continuous update of movement authority speed limit of authority cap signaling imposition of psr application of braking curves prevention of spat reading of rfid tags functioning of radio competition the braking curves were actually much better than the theoretical based uh, predictions as you can see in this diagram this is one of the trial uh, display of dmi for speeds at 160 kmh again the trikas table of control needs to be designed it also has aspect of entry signal requires aspects of exit signal the distance between entry and exit this is the movement authority it also requires the points to be set in the route so all these things need to be checked properly for the safe implementation of kavach the tick words tikas and kavach are inter, uh, uh, are used uh, frequently both do mean the same tikas has been recently uh, renamed as kavach the auto section trials is uh, a collection of field inputs from mid section continuous update of movement authority in the block section based on the line side signal aspects and track circuit status or right in case of automatic signal at danger communication handing over from station 1 to station a so these are the various trial scenarios one of the trial scenarios what we have done for automatic trials we require remote interface unit Uh, to can kind of gather this signal status in the automatic block section to bring it bring down to the central location at the station this part is known as remote interface unit in the absolute block section the communication is cut off with station a once it passes the lost stop signal and it is made just 1.5 km before the approach of the next station signal whereas in automatic block section the communication is first made with the approaching station and then relinquished with the handing over station for continuous seamless change over of continuous movement authority these are the various operating modes or symbols stand by staff responsible mode you can say limited supervision mode i full supervision mode override on site trip mode post trip reverse mode short mode non leading mode system failure mode and isolation mode the staff responsible mode allows local pilots to move under his own authority limited supervision mode is occurs when there is only partial track side information full supervision mode occur, appears automatically when the on board kavach has all the information required for supervision of a train override mode needs to be selected by local pilot to pass defective signal at danger on site mode 
for occupied uh, when it enters into an occupied track section after override mode it enters into os mode shunt mode supervises shunting limits general requirement the local operational staff maintenance and firms need to be interacting continuously for the upkeep of tcas upkeep of the knowledge of tcas working equipment courses need to be run by all the training institutes and at the loco sheds when before the loco is actually sent for uh, a track uh, for its utility uh, the entire tcas needs to be checked through a computerized automatic test report the modification of application logic of kavach uh, control table application logic rfid should be controlled properly to avoid error there are different types of brake systems uh, which kavach has been interfaced irab type cb type and e70 and electronomatic but still brake interface for tit is need to be development is need to be developed this is the biu flow diagram where locomotive brake controls and uh, IRAB panel and TCAS both interact and deliver the brake signal output. This is an electronic module used for BIU, a pneumatic panel. And then it has uh, different types of control systems, independent brake controller, automatic brake controller, brake pipe pressure control interface. This is a whole schematic of BIU interface. The details of electronic module and pneumatic panel are shown over here. Normal brake, full service brake and emergency brake. There are the three different braking levels that TCAS could control. And it can, in addition to this, it has a light engine brake facility also. It's BP charging cutout, emergency brake. It records all that BIU data. Uh, and uh, all the fail-safe uh, mechanisms required for proper interface of braking are ensured by having is cutting, cutting off traction while applying the brake, audio visual indication, execution of braking command is ensured and the status is read back by TCAS. BI works parallel to the locomotive system. It doesn't affect the braking characteristics. It can override the loco pilot braking, vice versa. BIU initiated braking cannot be reduced by loco pilot. Manual isolation is possible. Periodical monitoring at short intervals, like heartbeat monitoring of pneumatic walls is done every 200 milliseconds. So loss of electric power will reply uh, will result in an automatic emergency brake for any brake application traction is cut off. So this is actually a E70 uh, family based uh, brake interface developed. You can see the additional module has come up over here. This is a modified interface for interfacing it with Kavach. And for a computer controlled brake system. Uh, we have an additional module installed here that is known as a uh, train protection module. And uh, the, these are uh, of uh, uh, suitable for North MC type of brake systems available for Indian Railways locomotives. Then the fitment diagrams, uh, which part of the uh, onboard unit uh, like uh, the local vital computer, the GSM antenna, GPS antenna, BTM. In fact, it has uh, interface with uh, bellies also. Uh, brake interface units, all these, whatever are quoted, are issued in coordination with the electric loco directorate. So again, the DMI placement on Kavach on the left hand side is being done. This is all about uh, Kavach uh, that is being introduced on Indian Railways for facilitating uh, for speeds up to 160 kmh. Thank you.